I look to the future, and what I see is not all about the next senior pastor. What I see is about what can be accomplished through a team of a bunch of community of people pulling together on the same rope. I believe together we can help people. I believe together we can change people's lives. I believe together we can deploy people and empower people and uplift people and send people and challenge people and comfort people because I believe fundamentally the church is about people. We first came here in 1968 and we've been at Central ever since. I think the reason that we've been here so long is because we were willing to accept change. You can imagine how much change there's been <laughs> in 55 years. But something that we've learned at Central is to accept all of our pastors in open hands so that God can use them rather than us holding on to them like we want to. <laughs> at the time, I was serving on our elder board, and the elder board was searching for our next senior pastor. And Jed and I had a mutual friend. In fact, this friend attended the church that Jeb was a teaching pastor at. And he goes, I don't even want to tell you this name because I think he'll probably be interested in talking to you. But my friend, Jeb Wilhite, who's my teaching pastor, I think he might be your guy. Now you think about it, Jed's 32 years old. Central's not a small church, it's 5,000 people. It's a pretty big role to come in and step into as the senior pastor of a mega church of 5,000 following a, a leader who had an impeccable track record of 17 years. So that's a lot of pressure. As I began conversations early on with Central, and they mentioned that they don't call Las Vegas Sin City, but Grace City, my heart kind of fluttered. My pulse began to quicken. And I said, if that's true, that's a place with a heart that beats like mine. Anytime you transition um, a church, the leadership kind of role, it can be a little rocky. And so he moved us in, and by now I am eight months pregnant. And he said, babe, don't unload all the boxes. We're gonna leave them in the garage. The odds are we are not going to make it here. And I was like, are you kidding? Well, like we have just relocated and, um, and we may not make it. And he goes, well, I don't know that I was called to make it, but I'm definitely called to be here now. Things were changing. You could feel it. People were a little bit off kilter. But thank God Central was accustomed to change. That was part of who they were. And they were willing to embrace it. Judd came with an urgency to share the gospel with every person that he could get in front of. And he changed the culture of our church like in minutes. And then the church began to grow and we begin to see people really far from God and outside the church who never darkened the doors of a church. I remember the first time we baptized over a thousand people on a single weekend. And I knew then that God was up to something extraordinary in our church, something really special. And from that day forward, it's never been the same. One of my first recollections of Judd is that he he put together a, a team, which you know I think is is a real humble style of leadership. Judd's one of the most empowering leaders I've ever met. Um, he really wants to not only live out his dream and live out his passions, but he wants to help other people do that too. You know, you always see Judd as your pastor. I always saw Judd as my leader. Um, and maybe even a little intimidated at first when there's this guy on the stage that you've always looked up to, like, how do I be a friend to this guy? Um, but Judd has always been someone that he tears down that wall, that barrier for you right away. I mean, I often say that to know Judd is to love him. And the same guy you see in public is the same guy he is in private. In my opinion, that's pretty uncommon uh, for the person to be the same in front of thousands on the platform, in the pulpit, and the same person if you're sitting in his living room or, or at a coffee shop in an airport, uh, Judd is the same person. He's, he's always been that way. I used to always go grocery shopping with my dad, and I just remember standing in the freezer aisle, and you know someone would come up to him and ask for prayer, 
and I just remember at the time, I'm just like, I'm so cold, can we please leave? But no, he'll stop right where we are, even if it's in the cold freezer aisle, and he'll just be like asking, you know, how can we help you? How can we pray for you? Back in 2019, I, I went through the most difficult season I've ever walked through. And I'm not kidding, every day Judd was reaching out, just checking on me, seeing how I'm doing. Uh, offering to pray for me um, and tell me he's praying outside of these phone calls. He was really there for me in the trenches. Uh, rather than leaving me hanging to figure it out on my own, uh, he, he carried the burden with me. When I've had my mom pass or my brother passed, his first question is, what do you need? How can I serve you? And uh, he brings an, uh, an army with him of people to come and share love and support during tragedy. Just three years after Pastor Judd and Lori had moved to Las Vegas, um, one of the most tragic events in our city that I'll never forget was an officer, Officer Henry Prendez, who was shot and killed um, in the line of duty. And I remember that day our whole city pretty much paused and we honored his life. And Pastor Judd was the one who delivered the message at the funeral. And every news station in Las Vegas was airing this message. God, we do come to you with heavy hearts. We come to you today aware of the reality of death. But we're also aware of the reality of your love. We're aware of the grace that you've shown us in allowing us to know Henry, to interact with him. And even today, God, we're aware that you're here with us. It was a moment for our city, um, for our church. And it was a moment that the gospel went out in a really beautiful way out of a really brutal situation. It was a moment where Pastor Judd wasn't just a pastor to Central, but really became a pastor to our city. Then you had the October 1 shooting and that was tragic. I mean, it's the biggest mass shooting in America's history. And watching Judd, steadfast leadership to say, let's go, let's, let's love our city, let's love people. Well, it's just important for us to come together as a community and to really remember that when the darkness seems like it's the darkest, that's when the light shines the brightest. God has been so good and he has really sustained Judd and his leadership and our incredible leadership team to be able to lead through those seasons in a really powerful, Jesus-centered kind of way. Within the first decade of Judd being here, I remember this phrase he coined, it's okay to not be okay. And um, now it's even on the side of our buildings. But what's interesting is I talk to people all over the valley who've never been here before, but they've heard that phrase. And they've always said, that's pretty awesome that you just welcome people as they are. And uh, we really are a welcoming church, but I really think that speaks to the heart of our pastor too, because that's how he really does feel about people. He loves to help those who are broken, those who feel like outcasts or misfits. Um, he's always willing to help and offer a hand to those who are struggling. You know, when COVID hit, he was the first pastor to be out there just trying to make a difference. Even though we couldn't meet and gather in the church together, he was on the front lines handing out food and helping people who were in need during that time. He was putting food in people's cars and giving them a big smile and just a little bit of hope in a season where everything felt so hopeless. And I think Central has the we want to get out and serve people mentality because that's been let out by Judd. When it comes to uh, recovery ministries, he wants us to be the leading recovery ministry in the city. And then in recent years, it goes well beyond that. It, it's any church that he can help have that same effect, just bringing Jesus, being the hands and feet of Jesus. Any church that can affect any sort of community, Judd wants to help give that coaching, that guidance too, which I just think has really allowed him to flourish and, and more so than just being the senior pastor of Central, just being the senior pastor of Las Vegas, but truly him just being a senior pastor to anyone who's hurting and in need of hope. He can lead really strongly from a stage, but I think he even leads more beautifully one-on-one -on -one in person. 
And, you know, it's been really an honor as his wife to get to be on the front row seat for that. Lori's on the front lines just wanting to help move people forward. Lori is jumping right in, right in the middle of everything, even though you may not see her at first, but she is a woman of prayer, and she is a woman who stands strong for her husband, and she is there. She is there for our staff and our leadership. She helps pastors, wives from literally all over the country, and she's helped thousands upon thousands of pastors and their wives stay connected and stay in ministry because she has a heart for those that have been wounded and hurt, and uh, she helps women discover their voice. And Judd cheerleads her to be her best self and best version of herself. She doesn't have to just be Judd's wife or the pastor's wife. He sees that she has her own calling, and he's cheering her on literally all the way. I feel like we have grown a lot as leaders, as people, as in our marriage and our faith um, because of the people of this church. We feel just as called today to Vegas and to Central as we did 20 years ago. Since Pastor Judd has been at Central, over 120,000 people have come to make Jesus the leader and forgiver of their lives, which is really fulfilling our mission of introducing people to Jesus. Where the rest of the world says what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, we don't believe that. We believe that what happens in Vegas can actually change the world. And a lot of that is because of the heart of who Pastor Judd is and the heart that he has to follow Jesus himself and share the gospel all over the world. So I look to the future and I get excited because I think uh, more so than ever, the church is gonna be critical in helping people recover from loss and helping people navigate the disintegration of the family unit as we once knew it, and helping people find out who they are, their identity, uh, and helping people heal from shame and guilt and be restored to walk with their heads held high. Um, you know, I see a future where uh, the church stands as a beacon of light, where even people that don't believe in God and, and don't wanna have anything to do with the church, if that church was to go away, they would be impacted because that church did so much for the community. Uh, I really want people that don't believe, don't wanna have anything to do with the church, to still respect the work of the church because they see what we do for the community. And that's who Central has been. And as I look into the future, I think it's just more and more who we're going to become. And so that's gonna be really just a resource for our communities that you, you, can't, uh, you can't quantify. It's amazing, you know? For the good of others and the glory of God. That's right. Always. Thank you.